we think, y'all? Should women have access to the nuclear football? The most hated woman on the internet doesn't think so. Get your blue light glasses on and let's get into it because it's screen time. Pearl, 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 Pearl Davis, just pearly things on YouTube, has amassed millions of followers and haters for her red hot takes like women shouldn't vote, which apparently started as a joke, but now she's serious. She also believes women are inherently evil. They ruin everything they touch. What else, Pearl? You know, I talk a lot about the the generation of shitty wives. You're supposed to be his helpmate. You're supposed to submit to his authority. Women leave their husbands for the stupidest and dumbest reasons I have ever heard in my life. Men are the superior beings. You can see why she might have a hater or two. I will say we wouldn't have Biden as a president if women didn't vote. I'm not saying we should take away anyone's rights, but maybe we could implement some kind of an intelligence litmus test before heading to the polls and maybe we get the same result. But just know that modern feminists really, really hate Pearl and her traditional values. They call her a pick me. They call her a woman hater. And now Pearl has weighed in on whether or not she thinks women have what it takes to be the president of the United States. Oh, boy. I'm not the biggest fan of female politicians. I I think generally we're too emotional. Do I want someone with the nuke bomb that could get their period, you know, and then she's in a bad mood? I I don't want that personally. Yeah, I suppose it'd be... I I fear the day we have a woman president in the U.S. I fear that day. Why? I I just, I don't, I don't think women, women aren't meant to lead. We're not meant to lead countries. Can you imagine the kind of backlash I would get? Or any man would get saying what you're saying. I know, but you guys know I'm right. Bro is flabbergasted. I don't ever want to meet Pearl while she's on her period, especially if she has homicidal world-ending thoughts. Obviously, this is ridiculous rage bait, but here's why her opinion is flawed. It's rooted in identity politics. We haven't had a female president in this country, not because they're a woman, but because none running were ever the best for the job. It's not anti-woman. It's personal. Hillary Clinton was god-awful. Kamala Harris was one of the most unpopular presidential candidates in 2020, dropped out super early, and now we've been blessed with her word vomit. Also, we can say she was the first female vice president, the first black, first Indian, whatever. We did it, Joe. Nikki Haley tried to be cutesy and put out ad campaigns like, I'll stick my high heel in your backside or whatever. It was kind of Dylan Mulvady coded, like, oh, you wear high heels because you're a woman. To say that women shouldn't be president is like the opposite spectrum of what the left is doing. We have to stop patting ourselves on the back for irrelevant firsts, checking made up boxes and start electing candidates based on actual merit. I don't care if you're a woman. I need you to be the best. And if the woman is the best, great. If the man is the best, Great. Stop with the identity politics madness. You know when people say they were born in the wrong era? Like, man, I just would have crushed it in the roaring 20s or whatever. I cannot relate. I cannot go anywhere without Google Maps. What I can say is I was born to scroll on this little radiation death trap. And I am so grateful that I live in the internet era so I I can witness this budding relationship. I apologize. That was perfect. I'm breaking all the rules. I'm breaking all the rules. Well, I guess uh, we might make some mistakes. Who knows? <laughs> I think one of the biggest problems we have in D.C. is that everyone's egos are too big. I actually just prefer to have no titles at all. Oh my God, I can't. You're opening yourself up. I'm just being me. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, the comments. Is this real? If I show this to my parents, they'll think it's real. If any of you thought that was real, you need to go log on Facebook with the rest of the boomers and you also need to have your voting rights revoked. The plot twist we need. Love on the Spectrum is my favorite show. Give them the fantasy suite and next season of Love is Blind is about to be crazy. This actually got me thinking a Love is Blind spinoff in D.C. would be incredible, where the Testants are notable figures, politicians, outspoken celebrity activists, people of that nature. They go into the pods, can't see each other, can't talk about politics, and see who falls in love with each other. I am not going to name drop, but I was talking to a Republican congressman a few years ago who actually told me that he's pretty good friends with one of the squad members, and I was flabbergasted and he was like yeah like I hate her politics to my core I'll call her out on the house floor I'll call her out on cable news 
that if I see her in the hallway, we're cool. And for that reason alone, I think this dating show concept would be totally wild because if two of the most polarizing firebrands in politics can be friends, I think they can be lovers. I'm going to pitch that show idea. Nobody steal it. Now, Beyonce is dipping her toe in the country music world, releasing her new album, Cowboy Carter, and it's not getting the warmest of welcomes here in Nashville or online for that matter. She is getting ripped over her rendition of Jolene. No, sounds like trash, stay in your lane, screwed up a great song, stop, just stop. Ew, absolutely not. Ew, no, she ain't country. It's like Madonna started gangster rapping, just not right. Okay, country music fans are pissed, but this is the real reason why people are upset. I can easily understand why you're attracted to my man. Because nobody on planet Earth wants her ugly cheating husband. Jolene, you can have him anytime you want. You don't need to ask me for anything. She can keep him even in the next life. Beyonce is extremely talented. However, the only woman who got away with covering Jolene is Dolly Parton's goddaughter, Miley Cyrus. I can't play the video on YouTube, but if you know, you know. A lot of people say white people have no culture. I raise you Snuggies. I raise you New Balance dad sneakers and Old Navy t-shirts on the 4th of July. I don't really know what white culture is, but apparently something we have on lock is our slang. So, you know, black people, we have our own slang, but I'm going to tell you my favorite slang from white people that they really ate up. My first favorite one is Newsflash Buddy. Cause it's like really Newsflash, Newsflash. Like when they say Newsflash Buddy, they finna tell you about yourself. Like they really finna put you on game like Newsflash. What's it to you, pal? No, cause for real, what's it to you? Why are you in my business? That's what they mean. They basically saying like, why are you in my business? Like my top favorite though, low key, is when they be like, no more Mr. Nice Guy. No, like now you done made them mad. Other submissions, you're barking up the wrong tree. Who died and made you king? How do you like them apples? That's a good one. With all due respect, and then the full-on disrespect comes out. One of my personal favorites is for crying out loud. I'm white and I'm dying. Why are we so dorky? I got a bone to pick with you is one of my mom's favorite things to say. Cruising for a bruising is one that cracks me up. You snooze, you lose. Hold my beer goes crazy. It's not the heat that'll get you, it's the humidity. It's a classic. I completely forgot about Show's Over. Thank you for reconnecting me to my culture. I will close out with this one. It's a childhood classic from my mom. She used to say cool beans, and I've never heard a person of color say cool beans. I think that is probably like peak white lady speak. So that's, I figured it out. Cool beans is white culture. All right, during last week's segment of Screen Time, we told you that we are upping the ante, adding a competitive edge to this Screen Time report. I am also going to try to get my Screen Time down. However, I'm not punishing myself. So whoever has the highest Screen Time aside from me will have to give up social media for three days. That was my favorite suggestion out of the few that I got. I got some great suggestions on Instagram, by the way, um, including 24 hours without any Screen Time, Tape the phone to their forehead. Three days no social media, which is my favorite. This is why we're going with that one. Smash the phone with a hammer, which um, I think is a liability. We couldn't do that. Make an embarrassing or funny post on social media or speak with an accent for the day. That's That was tempting. I think having people do embarrassing things is funny, but, you know, I wanted to start off small. Bleach bit their phone. Uh, wear a fake mustache for the day. Walk around the office and pretend to be a cat or a dog that I have I will never make any of you do that that's demeaning wear clothes inside out for a day make them watch a Kamala Harris speaking event in full sound on no alcohol that's hard tickets to a WNBA game that is also tough make them watch the view for a week also tough so anyway I'm starting off I'm being kind and they'll just do three days with no social media I think that's doable but let's get into the screen times this week Brooke had seven minutes and I'm sorry Brooke had seven hours and two minutes. Dylan, seven hours and 24 minutes. Ryan, three hours, 15 minutes. Molly, four hours, 55 minutes. Adam had six hours, 10 minutes. Nick had six hours, 49 minutes. Unfortunately, Dylan, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you have the highest screen time aside from me at seven hours and 24 minutes. So you'll have to give up social media for three days. Do you think you can do it? Dilly? No comment from Dilly. <laughs> uh, we did talk about maybe potentially doing a shot of white lightning moonshine because we tape in a moonshine distillery. We have almost every flavor your brain could ever think up outside on that wall. 
but white lightning is like the flavorless hellscape one that really burns it's the one that you think of when you think of moonshine but we also tape at 10 a.m on a tuesday so dilly will have to do the social media detox and that's all she wrote i'm gonna get my scroll on follow along at Haley carinia on all platforms and i'll see you next week 